In the night sky, there is a brilliantly shining object that draws millions of eyes upward. Not the moon, nor the sun, but Venus are the most enchanting planet in the solar system. Since ancient times, humans have been fascinated by its sparkling glow at dawn or dusk. That's why they named it Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. And many once believed this was a gentle and poetic world. But the truth is the complete opposite. Hidden beneath thick layers of clouds lies a molten nightmare. Surface temperatures reach up to 475 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. A planet once shaken by terrifying volcanic eruptions. With lava plains stretching all the way to the horizon. For centuries, Venus kept those deadly secrets hidden behind a misty veil disguised as breathtaking beauty. It wasn't until NASA's Magellan spacecraft arrived in 1990 that the veil of mystery slowly began to lift. And now, more than 30 years later, the images left behind by Magellan are still telling stories about Venus that have never been known before. Let's begin our journey of discovery. Since 1960, nearly 50 missions from the United States, Russia, Europe, and Japan have been launched to Venus. Among them, some spacecraft never made it out of Earth's orbit. Some lost contact en route. Other missions orbited the planet or simply flew by to use its gravity to reach other planets. Only a few missions successfully landed on the surface of Venus. The United States Mariner 2 mission was the first successful interplanetary mission in human history, reaching Venus on December 14, 1962. This spacecraft flew past at an altitude of 34,833 kilometers above Venus's surface and collected the first data on the planet's atmosphere. On the Soviet side, their Venera program achieved many significant milestones in the quest to explore Venus. Venera 3, launched in 1966, became humanity's first probe and lander to reach and impact another celestial body beyond the Moon. However, instead of making a gentle landing, it crashed into Venus's surface, damaging the spacecraft and preventing any data from being sent back to Earth. By 1967, Venera 4 became the first spacecraft to successfully enter the atmosphere of Venus. Through relentless effort, the Soviet Union finally managed to make a soft landing on Venus's surface for the first time with the Venera 8 mission. It operated for less than an hour before succumbing to the scorching heat and being crushed by the planet's extremely high atmospheric pressure. By 1974, Mariner 10 flew past Venus to use its gravitational pull to travel toward Mercury. It captured the first images of the thick clouds in Venus's atmosphere, revealing extremely high wind speeds. One year later, in 1975, the Soviet landers Venera 9 and 10 transmitted the first images from the surface of Venus. These crude black and white photos were the very first views we ever had from the surface of Venus. They revealed a desolate, barren, and eerie landscape. As you can see, the images from the Venera missions captured only very small portions of the surface. The camera could only record scenes just a few meters in any direction. And the landers were destroyed just a few hours after landing, due to the immense atmospheric pressure. Compared to the cameras now used on spacecraft exploring Mars, the difference is enormous. The Venera 15 and 16 missions, which were orbiters operating from 1983 to 1984, marked the final missions of the Venera program. Mapped in detail 25% of Venus's terrain, from the North Pole down to 30 degrees North Latitude. This is like looking at a map of Earth that's missing most regions near the North Pole, the Equator, and the South Pole. Not only that, 
but the 25% that was mapped showed uncertain and blurry terrain due to the low image quality. NASA didn't want that. They hoped to do better. They wanted to see all the surface geological features hidden beneath the thick cloud cover, even the planet's interior. This raised a difficult challenge. How do you create a global geological map of this planet? And a special mission was designed to answer that question. That mission was Magellan. The Magellan mission operated from 1990 to 1994 and was named after the 16th century Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Famous for his voyages, mapping efforts, and circumnavigation of the globe. The goal of the Magellan mission was nothing less than to map most of Venus's surface at a spatial resolution of 50 kilometers, with vertical resolution of 100 meters. It would capture images of surface features as small as one kilometer wide. It would also collect near-global gravity field data, with a resolution of 700 kilometers and an accuracy of 2 to 3 milligals. Ultimately, this data would help improve understanding of the planet's geological structure, including its density distribution and internal dynamics. Accomplishing this mission was no easy task. Magellan had to face a planet often referred to as a kind of hell. Venus's atmosphere is about 90 times thicker than Earth's. This results in atmospheric pressure of up to 92 bars to 92 times Earth's atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric components are mainly carbon dioxide and nitrogen, with the presence of sulfuric acid. Many previous spacecraft from the Venera missions had perished just hours after landing on Venus. To survive and complete its mission objectives, Magellan required major technical and orbital improvements. First, engineers used a 3.7-meter antenna design for dual purposes, both radar mapping and communication. It could transmit at 268.8 kilobits per second, the highest data rate of any planetary mission at that time. The radar system on Magellan was one of the most advanced ever launched into space in the early 1990s. It operated in three modes, Synthetic Aperture Radar SAR, Altimetry ALT, and Radiometry RAD. SAR is a type of radar capable of producing high-resolution images by synthesizing signals from multiple sweeps, allowing Magellan to see through the thick cloud cover that constantly shrouds Venus's atmosphere of something optical cameras cannot do. Not only did it map into dimensions, but Magellan was also equipped with alt radar to measure elevation, creating a 3D map of Venus's terrain. In radiometry mode, the high gain antenna was used to record microwave thermal emissions from Venus. Magellan also flew in a polar orbit, scanning Venus from north to south on each orbit. This allowed it to map the surface of Venus in narrow strips, which over time accumulated into a comprehensive map. Interestingly, Magellan was largely assembled from spare parts left over from previous missions, including Voyager, Galileo, Ulysses, and Mariner 9, in order to save costs. With all the technical improvements considered state-of-the-art at the time, Magellan was ready to head for Venus. Initially, the mission aimed for a launch in 1988, which would have taken three months to reach Venus. But Magellan's fate changed in January 1986. When the Challenger shuttle exploded after liftoff, killing the crew and grounding the shuttle fleet. Although unrelated to the tragedy, the Centaur G Prime booster rocket designed to take Magellan to Venus was cancelled for safety reasons. Instead, NASA replaced it with the inertial upper stage use a less powerful booster, which extended Magellan's journey to Venus to 15 months. On May 4, 1989, Magellan was finally launched. By August 10, 1990, Magellan fired its thrusters for 83 seconds, placing the spacecraft into a highly elliptical orbit around Venus. 
with its closest point at 300 km and farthest point at 8,500 km. Magellan's global mapping mission officially began. The first mapping cycle of Magellan took place from September 1990 to May 1991, aiming to map 70% of the surface. But it exceeded expectations, mapping 83.7% of the surface, achieving a resolution as fine as 100 meters. The captured images were 10 times sharper than anything before, revealing for the first time what lay beneath Venus's thick cloud cover. About 80% of Venus's surface was found to be covered in smooth volcanic plains, including 70% wrinkled plains and 10% smooth or low bay plains. Magellan discovered that the northern continental highland known as Ishtartera, about the size of Australia, stretches across two-thirds of the planet. The Maxwell Mondes mountain range lies within Ishtartera and rises over 11 kilometers high. It is the tallest peak on Venus, higher than Mount Everest on Earth with slopes that may be covered in iron pyrite. Magellan found several impact craters, and the materials ejected onto the surface indicated that it is a relatively young surface, less than 800 million years old. Venus does not have tectonic plates, but its surface is still being deformed by molten material from below. It has a global network of fault zones and many broad, low dome-like structures called coronae, formed by the upwelling and subsiding of magma from the mantle. These domes range from 160 kilometers to over 1,000 kilometers in width and may provide a mechanism for releasing internal heat through pyrite. Ground-based radar images and earlier spacecraft data had hinted at widespread volcanic activity at equatorial and northern latitudes. But Magellan revealed that volcanic activity exists everywhere on Venus, with 85% of the surface covered by volcanic material. From winding lava flows to volcanic domes 750 meters high and 25 kilometers wide. The mission's second mapping cycle, from May 1991 to January 1992, expanded coverage to 96% of the surface. Geological features were imaged from multiple angles to allow observation of ongoing surface processes. Magellan discovered Baltus Vallis, the longest channel in the solar system. Measuring 6,800 kilometers in length, slightly longer than Earth's longest river, the Nile. The third cycle, from January to September 1992 increased coverage to 98% and began stereoscopic imaging to create 3D maps, especially of the Maxwell Mondes peaks. After completing the third cycle, Magellan stopped imaging the surface. Instead, the fourth cycle, from September 1992 to May 1993, lowered Magellan's periapsis to 180 kilometers to measure Venus's gravity field. Beginning in mid-September 1992, Magellan kept its antenna pointed toward Earth, where the Deep Space Network recorded the telemetry data stream. This continuous signal allowed DSN to collect information about Venus's gravity field by tracking the spacecraft's velocity. Regions with stronger gravitational pull slightly increased the spacecraft's speed, detected as a Doppler shift in the signal. In the fifth cycle, from May to August 1993, the spacecraft intentionally plunged into Venus's upper atmosphere to adjust its orbit from a high elliptical shape to a near-circular one. This so-called aerobraking shortened Magellan's orbital period from 189 minutes to just 94 minutes. Allowing for high-resolution gravity mapping of Venus's polar regions. The final phase of the mission in August 1993 completed gravity mapping of 94% of the surface and concluded all radio science investigations. In September 1994, a one-week-long experiment called the Windmill saw Magellan use its solar panels to collect valuable aerodynamic and atmospheric data.
The mission ended in October 1994, when Magellan lowered its periapsis to 139.7 km to gather aerodynamic data at lower altitudes. However, the spacecraft burned up in Venus's atmosphere after about 10 hours, officially closing one of the most successful missions in the history of space exploration. After mapping 98% of Venus's terrain, Magellan entered public consciousness as the first space mission to create a global map of our neighboring planet. Over more than 50 months and 15,032 orbits of Venus, the spacecraft mapped a surface area 98% complete. Three times larger than all Earth's landmasses combined. Only the percent remained and mapped mostly located in radar shadow zones where the signal could not reflect well due to terrain angles. Magellan transmitted a total of approximately 1,200 gigabits of scientific data back to Earth, equivalent to around 150 gigabytes. Compared to your current phone storage, that may seem small, but it was a massive figure for early 1990s space technology. Magellan's scientific legacy didn't end there and it continues to be explored even today. From the data provided by the mission, scientists discovered features resembling fresh lava flows with little erosion, suggesting volcanic activity may have occurred in the last few million years. In 2023, a groundbreaking study compared to radar images of the same area around the volcano Motmans, taken eight months apart in 1991. The results showed that the volcanic vent had changed shape, doubled in size. And scientists detected signs of new lava flow along both sides of the mountain. This marked the first direct evidence of current volcanic activity still happening on Venus. And in May 2024, Old Magellan data indicated that lava flows from 1990 to 1992 near the Shield volcano Sifmans may have produced enough molten material to fill 36,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. These findings suggest that Venus is not a dull, lifeless world, but one that appears to remain volcanically active even today. And more than three decades after its mission ended, Magellan continues to deliver profound insights into this geologically and volcanically dynamic world. While Magellan gave us the first glimpse beneath Venus's mysterious surface, this enigmatic planet still holds countless unanswered questions. Are Venus's volcanoes silently erupting today? Did it once have oceans like Earth? Why did it become a fiery hellscape? And could microbial life exist somewhere within those thick clouds? Magellan gave us the first look, but the answers must wait for future missions. Journeys that are expected to take us deeper into the secrets of Earth's sister planet. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you had a relaxing and informative time. For now, goodbye and see you next time.